not bad, Dilla, gently. June was insane. July is also proving insane. I shan't be telling you what I think of it. Uh, I don't think that I should be doing that. So I'm kind of mad about it. Well, it's been a minute since I last posted a video. There are several reasons for that. So let's catch up. I, last time I posted a video was a video that I had pre-recorded like two weeks before even that one went up. So I haven't like filmed any, well, that's not true. I have been diligently, <laughs> not that diligently. My, my patrons chose the book to like for me to read and vlog for them in June to be Jade Legacy. And I knew it would be long and it was longer even than I anticipated. One, because the book is long, so it took me a while. Two, I recorded a lot of extra footage because I just like can't be stopped. And then holiday and got sick, which are the other reasons that I've just generally not been like posting anything. And then I also, it was like a point of principle for me to like finish the vlog for my patrons, which became a two-parter. It was like three hours after editing, three hours. So like I had to split it up for my patrons because my computer and like, um, yeah, because my computer wouldn't be able to handle a file, um, like all the files to, to make it all one three hour vlog, like, because it's in, I have a 4K camera now. I mean, my computer cannot handle that much. So I had to split it up for my patrons, but also until I actually like took that footage and edited it and uploaded it, like I wouldn't have room on my hard drive for anything else. So I was like, yeah, I need to finish this because I need to finish this, but also because I can't do anything else until I finish this. But also, also, so there's just like so many, like just perfect storm. Okay, so I was behind already and I was like, I really need to record something. I really need to record something. And then I started using a new face product, which I only learned after the fact has an adjustment period. So like my face started looking really bad. And I was like, oh no, maybe this isn't the right product for me. And I Googled it and they're like, yeah, like you should like start slow use it every other day, every third day until your skin gets used to it. Cause like, it's pretty typical to like for your skin to like not like it at first. And I was like, oh, great. <laughs> so like having a 4K camera, it's not very forgiving. So I was like, okay, well luckily like I have like a video recorded. It was like, maybe like, you know, if I give it a week, like I'll, I'll look okay again. Didn't really look great. And then I was having house guests over for the 4th of July who uh, were over for like majority of that week slash like I had to like clean the house and buy groceries for them and like just like be busy with prepping for them then had them here while I was also working I had the fourth off but I, that was the only day I had off so I was like working and entertaining and so like no reading no filming no nothing was happening <laughs> and then while they were here I got really really sick um I don't you know I haven't found patient zero I don't know exactly how I got sick but I either got sick from their kid because it was my friend and their kid um, like a little kid and I'm, I'm told that little kids are little like germ factories or it's that like we went to Universal Studios um, on the 4th of July which is also like a huge park with tons of people and tons of germs so like at some point I got really really sick so like I'm now you can probably hear that I sound a little bit nasally I'm mostly fine again um, it's taken me like I started feeling sick Thursday you don't know what today is but anyway so it's been like over like about a week or a little over a week since I started feeling sick and now I'm not totally better um I'm still like coughing a lot but otherwise I'm like I'm like totally like not sick anymore I'm just like recovering from having been sick um I finished the vlog for my patrons for Jade Legacy finally because I had three hours of footage after editing <laughs> Uh, now I finally was able to like clear my memory card, clear the space on my hard drive and film new things. But we are already halfway through July and I didn't get up the TBR for July and I now I have the wrap up to also do. So today, all that to say, today we are going to do both my June wrap up and my July TBR all at once so we can just like catch up. And um, this also gave me time to like finish some June books. I still didn't finish my June TBR, but... Some of my June TBR I was finishing in July. Yeah, June was insane. July is also proving insane because like I spent a bunch of it like with guests and being sick. So I'm quite stressed by how large my July TBR stack is when I haven't really started on that because I've been finishing June and we're halfway through July. It's fine. So let's go uh, chronologically, I guess. Uh, let's do my June wrap up and then it actually won't take that long because of reasons. And then July TBR, and then I'll be caught up-ish. I just have to like do all the reading then. Um, so yeah, it's good to be back. Good to be feeling like I'm back. And uh, sorry for being absent so long. Um, but yeah, now you know why.
and let's talk about what I did manage to read. Okay, so the first book that I read in June was The Last Word by Taylor Adams, my book of the month club pick. Um, yeah, this was my like pick from the books of the month. It is a thriller about somebody who posts a negative review of a book and then they like the, the author of that book like, comes for them. Or at least they think that that's what's happening. So I was like, as soon as this was one of the choices, so many people were like, Lana, you have to pick that. That's like, that's about you. <laughs> I was like, that's why I don't want to pick it because I'll be like, oh no, what if this happens to me? Um, but that is not a fear that I have because this book was ridiculous. Um, and not even in like a fun campy way. I've certainly read books that are ridiculous, but are like, I, it, it's like a nebulous, like hard to define thing and it, it probably varies person to person. But I, I feel like a book needs to be like self-awarely ridiculous. Like it needs to lean into being ridiculous and like needs to give you the sense that like it also knows. And it's like, we know we're ridiculous. This is why I love the show Riverdale. And you can like unsubscribe right now because you're like, my, she likes Riverdale unironically. I cannot trust her, which you know, fair enough. But Riverdale knows what Riverdale is. Like no one in Riverdale, no one writing Riverdale, no one directing Riverdale is under any illusions about what kind of show that it is. And when people, I've seen like videos, people being like, this dialogue in Riverdale is so unrealistic. Like who talks like this? And I'm like, do you think that they are unaware? Do you think that Riverdale doesn't know that it's like surreal, that it's like, over the top, that it is breaking the fourth wall, that it is homage and pastiche and absurdity. Like it consciously is choosing to do these things stylistically. So like, I love Riverdale. And if Riverdale didn't know that Riverdale was Riverdale, okay, then fair enough. That's, that's fair criticism. But it definitely knows. Like it's doing this on purpose, with intention. Anyway, point being, this book was just kind of bad. Like it wasn't like, so over the top that it's become like a satire of itself, which is kind of what I guess that's what I'm getting at with Riverdale. Riverdale is like self satirizing. I do not recommend this is not a particularly good thriller. The premise is pretty bad. And then like the the answer to what's been going on or like the who did the doing of the done it type of thing. Not very satisfying. I don't recommend it's pretty it's pretty dumb in my opinion. So the reason this wrap up won't actually take that long. It's not it's partially because I didn't finish my TBR, but it's also because four of the books on it are the books that Bookborn chose for me for our TBR swap. And we are having our like live shots about it in this coming week, I believe Wednesday and Thursday, uh, we or Tuesday, Wednesday, I think Wednesday, Thursday, and we haven't decided who's going first, but like those are the two days. So I will not be telling you like what I think about the Bookborn books here, because I will be telling the world what I think of them during the live chat with Bookborn. But anyway, the next book that I read was Invisible Women. Uh, Date of Bias in a World Designed for Men by Caroline Criado Perez. So this was the first of the Bookborn books that I read and finished. And uh, you'll find out what I thought on Bookborn's channel in the coming week. Next was another Bookborn book, and that was The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. I shan't be telling you what I think of it. If you want to know what I think of it, you'll have to join us in the live show on Bookborn's channel. The next book I read was my other book of the month club book, and that was A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. Um, I read The Lincoln Highway end of last year, beginning of this year, was very impressed with it and decided to read all the Amor Tolls books that Book of the Month Club has. I read Rules of Civility next. And after I picked it, everyone was like, no, not that one. I read Gentleman in Moscow. So this is, I think, the third and final book that they have. I don't know if Amor Tolls has written more than this. I think this is the only other one that that Book of the Month Club has. So yeah, um, this is a lot better than Rules of Civility. I think of the three, I think Lincoln Highway might be my favorite. But I did really, really like Gentlemen in Moscow. I'd have to think about that, which I definitely had time to think about as I knew I was doing this wrap up, but I didn't think about that. So anyway, um, very different um, in terms of like subject matter and setting and all that than Lincoln Highway. This takes place um, sort of like Soviet Russian Revolution era. Um, it follows like an aristocrat that's um, under not house arrest because he's in a hotel, but he's under hotel arrest for like the rest of his life because he's an aristocrat and that's like against the Bolsheviks. So, but for reasons, they're not gonna kill him. They're just gonna let him live in this hotel, but he cannot leave the hotel. I did see criticism, not a lot. Mostly this has po really positive reviews. I did see criticism and I had to like sort of think about why, cause I was like, that should bother me cause that's a good point, but it didn't bother me and why is that? So like, I always like want to know why I think what I think. It's not like enough for me to just think a thing. I'm like, why do I think that? Am I right to think that? The fact that this is like a really tumultuous time with like a lot of hardship, like historically speaking, like this era and this like area of the world 
had a lot of people going through a lot and suffering a lot. Certainly more so than an aristocrat who's like gone from generally just being a rich aristocratic dude to living in a really posh hotel for the rest of his life. So it's like, who cares? Like, there's so many people that went through so much more and whose stories I guess would be more interesting because they've gone through more. So like, who cares about this guy? Like, even like, okay, it sucks to like have to lay a stay in a hotel for the rest of your life, but like, you know, so like, who cares about this guy? And also, how interesting could that possibly be when he literally can't leave a hotel? Like, the reason this is a hardship for him is because like his life is gonna be a whole bunch of like monotony from now on. So like, who cares? So the reason this doesn't, I mean, I think that's fair um, in terms of like, you know, who are we focusing our narrative on? Who are we gonna like, not platform, but you know, like, give our attention to? Like, certainly there are more worthy stories. But I don't think every book needs to be worthy. You know what I mean? And it's not like there aren't books that and, and movies and shows that like cover this area of history and do show you those hardships. So if like there, if this was like a completely unknown era, an unknown hardship, you know, that we were like bringing pe to people's attention this era, then I'd be like, okay, probably don't focus on the aristocrat that like was in a hotel. But there are a lot of stories about this already. So like to center the story on this character who's like a little bit out of touch already because they're an aristocrat and is even more out of touch because they literally cannot be in touch with what's going on outside because they cannot go outside. Like he cannot go and like participate in like what's going on in his country because he literally cannot do that. So I really enjoyed the way that this like presented this kind of like tiny little microcosm and this person's day-to-day -day life is like focused on his day-to-day -day life. It's like the people who work at the hotel and like he himself like what's he gonna do to spend his time and like people who visit the hotel that he like becomes friendly with and becomes interested in and becomes like they become big parts of his life so it's like all these like little kind of mundane you know the Downton Abbey of the Russian Revolution you know like just like just people in this big hotel going about their business and, and interacting with him and he's kind of a quirky guy but the way that telling this story like having the lens be focused on this aristocrat the way that like in the periphery like you observe the changes that are happening in Russia without that being the focus of the narrative. So it's like you absorb the revolution and the political upheaval and everything by osmosis because even in this like isolated like little like the narrow scope and narrow view of this character you still witness the changes that are happening in this country without even meaning to. Like the way that you don't have to be paying attention to it, you don't have to be like focusing your narrative on those changes to see them manifest in like, even in this like hotel that is like this dude living this like isolated life in this hotel. You see the, the changes, like even without meaning to. And then he himself, like I think it's like, it's kind of like reading like Name of the Wind or like books like that where it's like, okay, it's like the day, day to day stuff, but it's like written really compellingly with like really good character work. So like I found the main character like charming. Um, and it's not to say like, uh, I'm defending the aristocracy or anything like that, but like, you know, he's a human being. like. It's, you know, you don't dehumanize the poor, neither should you dehumanize the aristocracy. Like, um, he's an individual person who made individual choices having been born into the aristocracy as he was. Like, it's not his fault that he was born an aristocrat. And he, like, has interesting views, some of which are, like, that's, like, a, you know, a good way to think and be a person and other stuff that's, like, you're clearly an aristocrat, but, like, not the worst version of that. And he's just, like, an interesting person with an interesting perspective on things. And the people he interacts with are interesting people with interesting perspectives on things. And it was just like, it was a, a lush and, and, and good time that like, it wasn't like propulsive or like this thrilling, horrifying historical epic or anything like that. But it, it was in how mundane everything was that it, it really like felt like lived in. And I really felt like I had like spent all these years with this man and kind of gotten to know him and like gotten to know this hotel and just kind of like vibed. And there's like, there's genuine like, there's heartwarming things, there's tragedy, there's, I, I think it was really beautiful. And I think it's fine to tell a story like this, you know what I mean? Like, I, you don't have to tell, focus your story, like find the absolute worst possible situation in any historical time period. And like, that has to be the story you tell. If someone had it better than that person, then you can't tell their story. You have to tell the worst story. Like, I don't think that that's like a fair metric. So anyway. If you're interested in anything that I just described, like, I would highly recommend this book. Next up for the year of Gaiman, I read A Nazi Voice by Neil Gaiman, which was a reread. This was my first time listening to it on audiobook, and I do recommend the audiobook. It's one of the few Gaiman audiobooks that's not read by Neil Gaiman, which is probably to its benefit because, like, there's a lot of, like, accents that I 
I'm sure Neil Gaiman would struggle to do, um, or that he would be like, uh, I don't think that I should be doing that. <laughs> the narrator is very, very, very good. And yeah, I, it's been, it had been a minute since I had read this. And it was, I had, it was interesting to me, like the things that I definitely remembered, the things that like I didn't, before even picking it up, that I was like, if you ask me what happens at a Nazi boys, like, that those were the things that I remembered and other things that are like pretty like significant that I just completely forgot. <laughs> so it was like weirdly like reading a book for the first time because there was so much that I had forgotten, but also familiar. So yeah, I owe you a couple gaming videos, um, but you know, they're, they're coming. <laughs> Next up for the Witcher read along, we read Baptism of Fire by Andrzej Sapkowski and the chat for it was on chapter three podcast as they all are. If you missed it, I'll leave a link down below. We had a great chat. I told Bethany this is like the farewell tour for Geralt because the focus like at, after this point really shifts away from Geralt. So I love this book. I loved it the first time. I loved it this time and it was a great time talking about it. So yeah, check it out if you missed it. Next two, I'll just do them at once because I'm not going to tell you. I shan't be telling you what I think of them. Uh, the Bookborn books are Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chang and A Song for the Void by Andrew C. Piazza. And um, yeah, if you want to know what I think about these books, gonna have to watch the live on Bookborn's channel. Now these next two I finished in July, just barely. <laughs> Jay Legacy by Fonda Lee. I did it. I finished the Greenbone Saga. Um, I feel like I've lived through something. I really, really do. <laughs> what a ride. What a ride. So much happens in these books. So much time passes in these books, in particular the last one. Yeah. Fonda Lee, man. She is, uh, very talented. So yeah, I finally, finally did it. And last but not least is the, my patrons and I are, the buddy read for us um, is a read along of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, which is a reread for me as everything this year is. I'm just rereading everything. Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor, which is the second book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. And yeah, I, there was something really, really big in this that I had totally forgotten. And when I was reading it, I was like, how did I forget this? Oh boy. If you've never read these books before, I recommend them. That's why we're rereading them. But um, trigger warnings. I mean, I told, I remembered this one being really, really dark and being without doubt the darkest one in the trilogy. But most of what I remembered of the darkness was like the war side of darkness because there's a lot of that in this. But there is also actual violence. So I had forgotten that. And I was, when I was reading this, I was like, well, I'm glad I warned everybody that this is the darkest one because I totally forgot about this. <laughs> Ooh, like reading the whole of this book, but in particular of this thing that I forgot, I'm just like, how is this YA? Is that allowed? <laughs> this is really, really dark, but really, really excellent. So I'm excited to read the third and final book this month. <laughs> Those are all the books that I read in June. Typically I would say like and subscribe, blah, 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 but nope, we're doing July TBR. So all these books I have to read before the end of the month, which is like very very soon oh no oh no first up i have the cask by freeman wills croft this is for blades and bodice rippers because of course in july we have blades and bodice rippers when i have no time so the live show for this will be on mars channel this year as with everything we are dressing up with all of our live shows for blades and bodice rippers so since this is like a um it's also og 23 if you have forgotten so we we're trying to read like genre progenitor type of things so this is like a classic i believe a t detective store. I mean, it has this fun emblem, so presumably I could rely on that. But yeah, this is like a classic um, detective story. So we're all dressing up as something adjacent to that, either like from this era or generally detectives or whatever. My voice is giving out. I don't know if I can keep going. I can do this. I can do this. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this. <laughs> My patrons and I are buddy reading just because it's not like the official buddy read or anything. Um, Pale Fire by Vladimir Nabokov. This is mostly my fault, I think, because I won't shut up about Blade Runner 2049 and Blade Runner 2049 frequently references Pale Fire. So I, it got my interest up for reading Pale Fire and I got everyone else's, well, not everyone, but some people's interest up. So I think they've, my patrons have already read this. I think they read it while I was sick. So I need to catch up, but I'm quite excited to read it and then probably rewatch 2049 again. Then my patrons and I, now that we're done with Book of the New Sun, we've decided to do another sci-fi series to read as well, not as the official buddy read, but also to like chat about extensively. So uh, the Hyperion Cantos is what we're tackling next. I read the first two 
last year, I think, or the two years ago. How long has it been? It might have been two years ago. Anyway, my patrons actually chose Hyperion, the first book for me, to read and vlog for them at some point. And then I myself then read the second one, but I never finished the third and fourth ones. So we're going to do them all over again. So the first and second ones will be rereads for me. Kind of like the Book of the New Sun, where I had read some of them, but not all of them. So we're reading all four every other month. So next month, I'm not reading um, Fall of Hyperion. That'll be September. But anyway, I'm looking forward to it because I really did enjoy Hyperion. Next is the book that my patrons have chosen for me to read and vlog for them. So now that I've just finished the Jade Legacy vlog, I need to like immediately dive into vlogging again. And that is A Natural History of Dragons, a memoir by Lady Trent. Now, I'm kind of mad because I used to own this in hardcover. I used to own this whole... Well, I don't know if it was the whole series, like whatever was out at the time. So it was like three or four books. I owned them all in hardcover. And then I like didn't read them for forever. And I was like, am I ever going to read these? Probably not. So I got rid of them. Now the hardcovers are out of print and my patrons chose it for me. So I had to go and buy a stupid paperback. So I'm kind of mad about it. <laughs> I wish I could go to my past self and be like, nope, don't, don't do it. You're going to need this. Because <laughs> it's like, I mean, I'm finally getting better about like, you don't need to keep this. You're not going to use this. You're never going to read this. Just get rid of it. And now the fact that this has happened, it's gonna like set me back in my like <laughs> mental health. <laughs> now everything, I'm just gonna be like, no, but what if that happens again? Maybe I do need it. You never can tell. <laughs> anyway, at least it's a lot shorter than Jade Legacy. So there's that. Next up for the year of Gaiman is I think the only book by Gaiman in my year of Gaiman that I have never read before. I'm pretty sure that that's true. It's not true. Fragile Things, Short Fictions and Wonders by Neil Gaiman. Um, I've read Trigger Warning and Smoke and Mirrors. So I've read those short story collections. This I think is the only short story collection of his that exists that I have not read. I was really looking forward to it. I, I mean, I still generally am um, because I remember the both times that I saw him speak, I, he read a story from Fragile Things, which made me go, oh, I really need to read that collection because that was a great story. And also it's like, you know, new Gaiman, which is like not a thing regularly for me. Like I've read most of Gaiman already. My patrons already started reading it or finished it and they're not too hot about this collection. They're like, that's not as good as Sugar Warning or Smoke and Mirror. So I'm like, this is probably my favorite cover for all of the short story collections. Just because I like bees a lot. I don't even know if that's a bee. Is it a bee? Possibly. I don't know. But I like that kind of thing. And it's orange. Objectively the best color. I'll probably do with this what I did with Smoke and Mirrors, um, which is to vlog where I tell you my thoughts as I finish each story. I don't know where I will find the time to do that, but that is my intention. Next, because I didn't read it in June, um, and we pushed the live show to July, although it's coming up fast, <laughs> is Dark Age um, for the Red Rising read-along. The live show will be on my channel. I need to read it. I've read this one most recently from all the ones that we're rereading, which is all the whole series. I read this like a year or two ago, a year or two ago for Alan's read-along. So this is pretty fresh in my brain, but I would like to reread it. Although it is really, really dark. But anyway, looking forward to chatting about this book and making Alex cry about all my accurate theories. Next is a book that um, I haven't read in a long time, but I loved it the first time I read it. And I sort of talked my patrons into reading it as well because the sequel, um, which this was originally a standalone, but there's a sequel coming out this month or next month. I don't know, but I want to read the sequel. So I wanted to read the first one again. And that is House of Salt and Sorrows by Aaron A. Craig. When this came out, it got a lot of buzz. I feel pretty like not, I don't feel much excitement for a lot of YA fantasy. This is like, oh, like five years ago, probably. Oh yeah, this copy is signed. <laughs> is it cool? No, it's not. Oh, it has an octopus on it. That's cool, I guess. Oh, I have a cool bookmark in here with the Game of Thrones quote on it. Who knew? I didn't. Publication date, that's what I was checking. 2019? Oh, I thought it was a little older than that, but that's still, yeah, that's, oh my god, that is almost five years. This is a retelling, which I don't really like. Usually fairy tale retellings, I'm like, mm, no. It is a retelling of The Twelve Dancing Princesses, which is not a, a fairy tale that people retell very often. It's always Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, well, usually those two. Sometimes Sleeping Beauty, sometimes Snow White. It's never The Twelve Dancing Princesses. I was so surprised by how moody and atmospheric this book was. The ending like let me down a little bit, but otherwise like I like devoured it. I was like, I think the first time I read it, it was like around Halloween time and I had been reading books that I thought would be kind of spooky and they were just like doing nothing for me. And then I picked this up randomly and this was like quite spooky. And I was like, okay, this was not like my Halloween read, but like 
dang, this is way more atmospheric and giving me like way more chills than anything that I thought would. And since then, um, she came out with a different book, not the sequel to this, um, completely unrelated called Small Favors. It was also really atmospheric and interesting. And I was like, I think this is an autobi author for me. That one also had an ending that kind of let me down. So I was like, this is what I've come to know about this author is that like, I really like her work. I like the atmosphere. Her endings like leave something to be desired, but that's fine. Uh, the journey is worth it. So she's written a sequel to this, House of Roots and Ruin, which comes out like very soon. So hence rereading House of Salt and Sorrows. Another YA book I'm reading with my patrons. I think they already started slash finished it. <laughs> that is the third in the Jane Austen mysteries that I've been enjoying. Manslaughter Park by Tears of Price. Um, the first were um, Pride and Premeditation and Sense and Second Degree Murder. I enjoyed both very much. And I like Mansfield Park, which I know a lot of people don't. Um, so I'm quite interested to see what she does with Mansfield Park to make it murdery. Um, I've been, I just have a really good time with these when I read them, so I expect this to be no different. And then even though I didn't actually manage to finish before they were hanged in June, Last Argument of Kings in July, I'll finish before they are hanged. Like, I'm not too, like, worried about it. I've read it a few times. <laughs> before they are hanged is my favorite in the trilogy, so I probably will make an effort to finish it. And then also Last Argument of Kings, so you know, when I get to it. Oh, because because Mara's reading them, so at some point we will chat about them. I, I don't know when. <laughs> I don't know anything. And the Witcher read-along continues with Tower of Swallows, um, which I remember the first time I read the series, this was where things went downhill for me. I'm hoping that because I'm going in prepared for that this time, that I kind of like, um, this like was like with Feast for Crows, like I remember the first time I read the Game of Thrones series or A Song of Ice and Fire, I was really let down my Feast for Crows. But rereading it, going in kind of knowing what it would be and what it wouldn't be, I actually really loved it the second time. So I'm hoping with Tower of Swallows now that like I do know what this is and what it isn't, that I will enjoy it a lot more the second time. But we shall see. This is 100,000% the best cover in these new hardcovers. Like, stunning 10 out of 10 no notes. Next up is Mickey 7 by um, Edward Ashton. And just getting this book was kind of a saga. This is the UK hardcover. I could, had been kind of interested in this book and then been like, oh, I'll, I'll get it whenever. And then I saw a sequel come out to it. And I was like, oh yeah. And then I went to look and Blackwell supposedly had one copy left of the hardcover of the first one. And then obviously the new one had just come out. So they had that in hardcover. And I was like, oh, cool. Like just in time. So I ordered both the hardcover of this and the sequel. And then like a month later, Black Wolves was like, whoopsie dopsy, sorry, we don't actually have that book, so here's your refund. And I was like, what, I have the hardcover now of the sequel, they must match. So I found on Amazon UK, um, this copy from a third party seller, which like cost twice as much as the copy that I had ordered from Blackwell's, but I was like, this has become a thing now. I must have this because the UK cover is as always superior to the American cover. It's a sci-fi story and um, I've talked to my patrons or some of them into reading it as well. So. There's no like reason for this. <laughs> this isn't a read along. This isn't anything like that. It's just because. <laughs> then um, I skipped Book of the Month Club um, in, I usually read like the previous month's books in the subsequent month. So like I didn't pick anything for um, June, June, right? Okay, whatever. Yeah, I didn't pick a June book. But I did have a book last year from Book of the Month Club, Book, uh, book of the Month that I didn't actually read um, that was like left over. <laughs> so I was like, well, since I skipped, then I'll slap this in. And that's Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen. But of course, July is like a crazy busy month. So if there's anything that I can bump off, it's probably this. So I probably still won't get to this, but it's short. I would like to get it done and count it towards my reading challenge on Book of the Month. But anyway, that's what this is. And last but not least is the aforementioned conclusion to the Daughter of Spoken Bound trilogy, Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lainey Taylor. This is the thickest and, in my opinion, the weakest in the trilogy, at least the first time I read it. I think it still will be because it was like a pacing thing. It wasn't, yeah, the story is fine. It's the pacing, but I'm still looking forward to it. <laughs> and those are all the books that I read and will read in June and July and why I haven't been around. So let me know in the comments down below. If you missed me, don't let me know if you didn't miss me. <laughs> Whatever you want me know, I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but only Saturdays. So like and subscribe to my Patreon if you feel so inclined and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.